Good morning, everybody. Lisa Pizik here, business and wellness coach. Happy Monday. I want to start this Monday off right for you, talking about the number one mistake that I made in leadership. Trying to lead my team in our network marketing business, trying to persuade friends and families and loved ones to make better choices in their health, and sometimes trying to persuade my kid to go to bed and eat his vegetables. And there's a common thread in all of this in persuasion where I found that I went wrong. And I'm pretty sure that maybe someone who listened to this video needs this message because you're doing the same thing wrong too, but you have the best of intentions when you're doing it. And it's what I like to call the spark versus the tug of war. Now, what I was doing, because it was what I was taught and it was what I knew and it was what worked for me, was trying to get people to realize why they were doing what they were doing, why they were going to change their eating habits, why they were going to start exercising, why they wanted to, in my network marketing, health and fitness business, why they were going to try to share with others what was working and why they were doing it. And it created this sort of tug of war between like me versus them where I was saying, do this, do this. Why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you dug in with your why? Why don't you care more or less is what I was saying to my teammates, to my friends, to my family, you know, to my son when I was trying to get him, you know, persuade him to do something. And that why approach, even though we have the best intentions with it, is not the right way to get someone to change. Because what that creates when you're constantly saying, but this works for me, why won't you do it? Why don't you care? What's your why? Hey, Christine, it creates a bit of resentment. It creates a bit of you're up here and they're here. And it creates a culture of people don't want to talk to you. They don't want to be around you. They run from you. They don't want to answer your messages. They don't want to have a conversation with you because they constantly feel like they're not measuring up. That you're up here and they're down here and they can't bridge that gap. They can't run with you. They're not as good as you. They're letting you down. They're not living into their potential. And it creates that culture of worry and it creates that culture of frustration and it becomes this tug of war between you and the person that you're trying to persuade. The better approach when you're leading a team, when you're coaching others, or when you're trying to persuade a friend or a family member to make a change, hey Nicole, a better approach is to make that environment so fun and so positive that people can stay around that campfire long enough that they're gonna catch that spark. Because motivation comes from within. And it's gonna come from them that they're gonna want to make a change in their diet, start exercising, eat their vegetables, clean up the house, lead that team, make that call, do that live video. Whatever you're asking people to do, Get them around that campfire. You do it. Lead by example and hope that by you doing those things over and over and over again, that they catch that spark and they then want to work with you and join you and get on that same path as you. Because that constant questioning or that constant, what is your why? Why don't you want this? It's it's moving people away from that campfire. They don't want to go sit at that campfire because they don't feel like they belong there. They don't feel like they're enough. And that's one of the worst feelings that I think somebody can feel. And that's certainly myself as a leader, that's where I went wrong. And that was not at all the intent that I had for people. I wanted my coaches with me to make money, to have impact, to lead others, to live a life they want. It certainly wasn't to push them away from the campfire. Hey, Nicole. Yes, I love it. Make sure you do all those to-dos and then light that spark in your campfire. You got it. And by you taking that action, other people are going to see what you're doing and they'll be drawn to you, right? So I wasn't, I had the best intentions with my team. I was just going about it all wrong. And I think that's a big mindset flip for me was that you can't 
Brendan Bouchard, a mentor of mine, said you can't nudge somebody off the fence with information. And I always thought about that. You can't push somebody off the fence. If somebody's on the fence about working a business, making a change, doing whatever it is you want them to do, you can't nudge them off the fence with information. Meaning that you can't try to get them to dig deeper and find their why and it's that spark. You got to lead by example. You got to create a community that people want to be a part of, that they have so much fun that they don't want to leave. They want to stay in groups. They want to stay on your team. If it's your family, they want to eat dinner with you. They want to go for a walk with you. They want to be around you. You want to create that culture that people want to be next to you because it's so positive and so fun and then have them catch that spark. All right, Nicole, I'm gonna hold you accountable to all those to-dos from our call because you are doing really good things and I'm super proud. Nicole, I business coach Nicole and she's just a rock star taking action. So she's got lots of sparks flying this week, which um, I can't wait to see. So all the rest of you, go. Go be the example that you want others to be. Go do those things that you want others to do and create that fun, positive environment in your life. All right, guys, that's my message of the week. If you need more help, head to www.lisapizik.com. I got a ton of business and wellness coaching programs there that I would love to dig in with you and make sure that you have that spark and that you're doing all those necessary things in your life. See you again next week.